Hey, Wicked Deke here. Doing something a little different today. Yes, a Toronto Maple Leafs review from a non-fan. So I'm an LA Kings fan. I'm not a fan of the Leafs. I don't dislike them or like them or anything of that sort. It's just I just don't pay that much attention to them. Um, but they just came through Southern California and they played the Ducks and the Kings. And I thought if you were a Leafs fan, you might be interested in my thoughts. Uh, just purely from the perspective of I'm not in the Toronto media or Toronto podcasts. And so if the Leafs win a game, I don't think they're the favorites for the cup. Or if they lose a game, oh my God, these players have no character. They should all be shipped off to Antarctica and the uh, franchise should be folded. Uh, <laughs> I have to tell you, when I'm bored, there's nothing better than pulling up one of those podcasts or uh, uh, the talk shows you know, that are filmed and put up on YouTube. And it's just, oh my God. Can these guys be any more extreme? Yeah. Matthews only scored one goal last night. He's the worst. Oh, jeez. Uh, anyways, uh, so the games kind of went the way uh, that I expected. Not the way that I think a lot of people would have expected, you know, if you just said the Leafs are playing the Kings or the Ducks. Uh, but, of course, when you pulled up the lineups before the game, you look at the Leafs defense, and you, know, you had to think either – uh, the coach was going to crucify his young defenders, or he was going to try to protect him, and he did what he was supposed to do, try and protect them. Uh, and so the Leafs were playing a fairly defensive-oriented game, which they should have done, um, because without Muzzin and Riley, of course, you have Dermont and what's-his-name, Hull, uh, and Lindgren, uh, you know, these kids out there. And, uh, you know, if they'd played run and gun, it would have been ugly. Um, so they were pretty defensive, I thought. And, you know, you're seeing Matthews deep, deep, deep in the defensive zone, Tavares as well. Uh, you know, if they gotten any deeper, they would have been sitting in the first row seats behind the Leafs net. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's what they had to do. And then you're obviously, you know, hoping that uh, when you do get offensive chances, you will put them in. Now, against the Kings, um, you know, they ran into quick. And Jonathan Quick, it's, you know, people seem to bash Jonathan Quick. I'm not really sure why. Um, he had a couple down years. He had a lot of injuries, but he is back now. And for about the last month, he has been like Jonathan Quick of the Stanley Cup. So, uh, you know, getting shut down by Quick is not exactly an embarrassment. Uh, and the Leafs had a lot of chances, to be honest, and it just didn't go in. Sometimes that's the way, way it happens. Uh, and the same thing against the Ducks. You know, you're playing against uh, two good goaltenders. Gibson's very good. Uh, and then uh, obviously Miller came in when Gibson gets hurt because Gibson always gets hurt. Uh, and so he didn't win. But I mean, let's be honest, the Leafs are never going to have scoring problems. I mean, if you go two games and, you know, it doesn't go great. Well, sometimes that just happens. But I mean, the issues with this team are not on offense. Uh, and they protected their young defenders. And that's what they should have done. Because if they don't and those guys get crucified, um, you know, it's going to kill their confidence. I'll give you an example. The Kings this year had one of their prospects up, uh, a guy named Bjornfoot, and uh, he was a first-round pick last year, and they played one of the first games against Edmonton. Then you can imagine what happened. Somehow he got matched up against uh, <laughs> McDavid, <laughs> this 18-year-old kid out of Sweden, and McDavid was turning him like a turnstile at the store. <laughs> it was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought Bjornfoot was going to get dizzy from spinning around. Um, you know, and after a couple of games, you know, the, the Kings sent him down to the HL team. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should get him a slightly softer landing <laughs> into the league. Uh, and you don't want to do that with the defenders. And so, you know, I thought the Leafs played the right style. Uh, was it, you know, vastly exciting, what have you? No, not really. But, you know, it's a smart thing to do. Uh, so I didn't really have any problem with their game plan. Also, when you're playing the Ducks and the Kings, when you're playing West Coast hockey, you're not going to go flying up and down the ice. The, the teams are going to stop that. You know, you're going to have to get into the zone and convert, convert on power plays and things of that sort. And again, as we all know, sometimes it goes in, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the one thing I did see with the Leafs that kind of really stood out, and I know it's not particularly sexy and something you can get outraged about, but um, just consistency uh, from period to period. Now, all teams are a little inconsistent from period to period, but it was kind of blatant with the Leafs. I, I'm not sure what happened in the first period against the Kings, but they just didn't really show up. Um, I mean, they weren't horrible, but you know, if you looked at that team and said, this is a, dy a dynamic offensive team, and then you watch that first period, it was a, really? Uh, now, to their full credit, they came out in the second period and they looked dynamic. They dominated the Kings, uh, and it was really quick, um, you know, keeping, them out, keeping the puck out of the net. Um, but, I, you know, again, maybe it's just the young nature of the team, but it 
if you look at the, the Leafs and see anything about them that you can say, wow, you know, here's an issue. Consistency definitely seems to be it. Uh, and I noticed it again against the Ducks. They would go through periods where they looked a little bored. And then, um, you know, periods where they were just completely all over the Ducks. And it was, you know, everything the Ducks could do to keep the puck out of their net. Um, so that would probably be a big issue to work on going forward. And frankly, they could use a couple more vets, um, you know, stable mentor type vets on this team. Uh, Clifford, I know when the trade for Clifford went down, there was talk about, you know, bringing in some guys who had some grit and then character and this kind of a thing. Clifford definitely does. Um, but you could use a bit more of that, certainly, particularly on defense, I would think. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Matthews, Marner, and Nylanda. Now I know these three guys is getting paid the big bucks, uh, certainly Matthews, Marner. And so they seem to be the butt of all the criticism. <laughs> Whatever you you listen to the Toronto media and the talk shows and everything, um, I I don't really see it. I, all three of them were very good. Um, you know, Matthews had a, a brutal turnover here and there, but he's a much better two way two hundred foot uh, center than I thought. I mean, you see a guy you know come into town to play and he's got forty plus goals, and you're thinking, oh, this guy cheats out of the defensive zone and what have you. I I thought he was very good defensively. He was down there fighting on the wall, winning the puck, turning the puck, uh, turning it around, transitioning it up. Uh, yeah, he had a couple turnovers, one that ended up in a goal. Um, you know, people make mistakes. That's going to happen. But the fact that he was down there and grinding and helping his young D decor and, and being a dominant force on the wall, I thought uh, it was really impressive. I thought he was much better 200 foot player um, than, I, than I, you know, kind of expected before the games. Um, so, would love to have him on the Kings. You should trade him to the Kings. Pick any of our players. We'd be happy to trade him. Uh, uh, anyways, thought he was great. Uh, yeah, he didn't score, but, you know, again, sometimes that's just going to happen. Marner, I th- you can see the talent. I thought he was fighting the puck both games. Um, but you can see, you know, kind of how he carries the puck, how he likes to facilitate. Um, it's kind of an interesting player. You usually don't pay a wing, you know, what he's getting paid. But, um, obviously a huge talent and may just been the two games uh, that I didn't see him at his best. Nylander. Nylander was much better than I thought. I've never seen Nylander play. Uh, the few games I have seen at the least in the past, I think he was either out with a contract dispute or maybe injured. I thought against the Ducks, he was the best player on the ice. Uh, very good. And, you know, coming in, driving the net, popping into the net, uh, you know, in front of the net and battling to try to score, um, you know, really carried the puck. Uh, I like Nylander. Really like Nylander. Um, future. What about the future? I actually think the future is probably better than, um, than maybe a lot of people have thought about, or certainly the criticism seems to suggest. Uh, let's talk about the defense. The defense is the issue. So I have the same criticism of the Leafs and of Dubas that I'm sure you've heard a million times and are sick of. Why did you sign Tavares? Yes, Tavares is a very good player, but in a cap area, you can't put all that money on your forwards. you got to Spread it across the team. You need balance. And the Leafs don't really have a lot of balance. So I would not have signed Tavares, but you did. So there we are. Um, the good news, Capital went up to 84 or 88 million next year. Probably more like 84. Uh, but there's going to be some more space. And you have all those defenders who are UFAs or RFAs. I would not bring back Barry. I would not bring back CC. I would not bring back really any of those guys. I would keep your younger guys. And then go out and sign. Instead of signing the sexy defenseman, the love of God, Dubas just needs to sign a couple of good, solid, stay-at-home guys. And they're relatively cheap. I'm talking about the guys who are going to score one goal a year, <laughs> but who are going to do all the grunt work and are going to clear the front of the net and are going to, you know, throw themselves in front of the puck and everything else. Uh, there was a Kings player named Forbert. Uh, he was traded to the Flames. He's a perfect second-pairing defenseman for uh, the Maple Leafs. And you can get him for like $1.5 million a year, maybe $2 million a year. He is going to be the most unsexy Leafs player you've ever seen. He will never do a dynamic pass. He will never rush down the ice. But you know what? When forwards come into the try to break into the center of the ice in front of the Leafs goalies, forwards going to knock them on their ass. <laughs> and that's what you guys need. You just need some stable defenders. So if you went next year, let's say, uh, I don't know what the combinations would be, but let's say Riley, Dermott in first pairing, Muzzin, uh, maybe Hole or and Furb- you know, one of these types of players in the second pairing and a third pairing of a good, solid stay at home D man. And, you know, maybe, maybe Ligren, I'm not a huge fan of him, but you know, whoever 
sending, you know, whatever it is. You put those that together, that is an adequate defense. And your young kids will get better as the season goes. And so by the time you get to the playoffs, maybe you have a slightly better than average defense. That's all you need <laughs> with this offensive talent. Uh, you know, so to me, the future looks pretty solid for the Leafs, uh, despite the fact I'm not a huge uh, Dubas fan. But, um, you know, if you go that direction. Now, if they go out and they play, you know, fantasy hockey again and you go out and try and sign a defensive name, like Barry, I, I don't understand why they traded for Barry. That just makes no sense to me. The guy's awful in his defensive zone. He was awful in his defensive zone with the Avs. Uh, <laughs> you know, why? Stop going for the names and just go for some solid players. Uh, you know, everybody doesn't need to be, uh, you know, somebody on a poster in the kid's room. Um, but man, if you, you know, if they go sign those guys, here's two guys. Forbert, the guy I just mentioned. Uh, Ryan, Ryan is a longtime San Jose Shark defenseman. Swedish guy, the most boring player you have ever seen. Literally does nothing dynamic, but you stick him out there on the penalty kill. You stick him out there, you know, in your third or second pairing, stay home defenseman, and he will do that job. And the only time you will hear his name is probably when he occasionally takes a penalty uh, by, you know, taking a smart penalty to stop a goal. <laughs> he will do nothing on your power play, nothing dynamic offensively, and that's okay. Because that's what you need. You need some of those filling guys. And how Dubas thought CC was that player? I, I, I really, he should get fired for trading for CC. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to sound like Toronto media. Uh, so, anyways, future to me looks like you know there's a lot of positives there. Um, so, anyways, I look at the Leafs, and I you know the end is not nigh. This is still a very talented team, and. If Dubas would pull his head out of his ass and build the def defense correctly, just so they're average, just so they're average, uh, you know, I don't see why the Leafs wouldn't be a threat every year for the Cup. Um, so anyways, that's thoughts from a non-fan. And uh, again, I don't watch a ton of the Leafs games, so maybe I'm completely wrong. But based on what I saw against the Ducks and the Kings, the end is not nigh. Is this a Cup favorite team? No. Defense needs to be better. But it's not that hard to improve. Uh, so be interesting to see. So anyways, let me know what you think. Well, uh, think below and have a good one. Geek out.